Welcome to Commander Pop Culture, a place to gather magical information with some laughs, might I add. All right, everybody, we're going to be talking about the spoilers from yesterday and today. It will be uh, the 30th and the 31st, so hope you're all ready. We'll get right into it. First off, we have Trumpeting Carnosaur. This guy is pretty powerful in that uh, I remember back in the day when you get a six drop and uh, it was just a vanilla creature. Then you add on an extra power. Then you add Trample. Then you add Discover Five, which is just Cascade for five. Now, if you get in the early game, you could discard it and do three damage to a creature Planeswalker. All rolled into one majority stages of every game you play with this card it's going to do something for you it's an a plus card uh it's a wild card in my opinion harry Wu, engine geneticist this is another one of those cards where they take the definition of exploit in magic and kind of break the fourth wall because the character in the movies uh exploits the dinosaur he specifically says when every human comes into play you exploit whenever you exploit a non-human you draw a card if it had power three or greater make a treasure as well everything about this card uh flavor wise perfection i love it <laughs> did a wnuendo in there grim gigantosaurus has monstrosity 10. it also has a cost reduction of that ability for each creature an opponent controls that's power four or greater it costs less to activate and once it becomes monstrous you destroy all artifacts and other creatures so you if you pull that off you will have a 2020 in play and an empty board to crush people with <laughs> it's a fun card i would say the final jurassic world movie was probably my least favorite movie everything just felt really bland and nothing felt original savage order for four mana and additional costs you have to sack a creature power four or greater and in turn you get this tutor dino put in play and it gets indestructible on a turn that's kind of cool hopefully you have like a haste enabler so it gets a, even a little bit better but it's like a, a very specific natural order with even worse conditions because the creature that you sack to this also has to be power four or greater so it's a significant creature that you're not going to be willing to give up too easily full art looks amazing it's the spinosaurus and the t-rex fight from the third movie but it has tentacles in there so i don't know what that's all about spinning the lapasaurus this is one of my favorite scenes from the movie, and the flavor of the card also makes a lot of sense. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, you put a neg one, neg one counter on a creature, and creatures with a negative one counter on them can't block. This dinosaur spits like this tar-like neurotoxin on people. It can blind you, and it also makes you lose motor control in your limbs. So this animal can slowly digest you, and that's what happens to poor old Dennis here. Holy fate, worse than death. In the first movie, he's the reason why all the animals escape the pens. Would I go out of my way to put in my decks? Probably not. I like it for the art. I like it for the flavor. In terms of, like, competitiveness, uh, not so much. Cresting Mosasaurus for eight mana and has a merge for seven. If you don't know what a merge is, you sack a creature and then uh, you pay the difference in the merge cost. So if I sack a creature with three CMC, the merge cost, the Cassis is now four. When it enters the battlefield, you return each non-dino to its owner's hand. That's pretty good. Surround Grizzanator's gonna full art treatment. That looks pretty sick. You could do some kind of combo with Surround Grizzanator and a number of decks. I personally play it in Brago. If you have two mana to invest into this with rocks, you attack with Brago, deal damage, the trigger to flicker all your stuff goes on the stack. You copy the trigger with Strionic Resonator. You untap everything on the first Brago trigger, and then the original Brago trigger is still on the stack, and then you can do it again. That's how the I use it personally there's plenty of other ways that you could abuse stronic resonator especially in artifacts where you tap and untap things and could reduce the cost of activations oh yeah very much possible born power stones getting full art treatment i play this on a lot of decks it's just a low hanging fruit it's like why not it's hard to find a good rate like the next step above this is solar ring and above that is mana crypt and after worn power stone you're availability for getting significant mana for your investment uh starts to dwindle if you have a high cmc commander you should be running uh, a war power stone i would say anything that costs five or more overflowing chalice getting a full art treatment i like overflowing chalice because it's good early and in the late game because you kick it multiple times and it gets that many counters based on the number of counters on it you make that much mana when you activate it also another one of those artifacts that i run big expensive commanders paleontologist pickaxe has a looting effect on attack equip one and craft with one or more creatures since it says more it must its backside must ma matter about how many you exile becomes dinosaur headdress 
Ooh. Enters, auto equips itself. So once it's attached to a creature, you choose an exiled creature card used to craft this headdress. Quick creature is a copy of the last chosen card. I don't know what's the point of exiling multiple creatures with this when you only need to exile one, you know what I mean? And then you'll always have access to the other stuff from your graveyard. Because there's plenty of other shenanigans out there that care about things being your graveyard so why not just do the bare minimum yeah it's just weird if anyone else out there finds that kind of strange and uh let me know in the comments below i can't see the application i have the oger tech the three mana rock the things that you craft with this have to be the same card type that's all there is to it that's the minimum stipulation turns into apex observatory it just tapped choose a card type shared among the two cards you used to craft it the next spell you cast this turn after activation lets you cast the spell without paying its mana cost. That just seems like a lot of hoops to get a free spell. <laughs> I don't really see the desire in this because it's also like a loss of tempo because then it's just tapped. So you're not going to get it immediately. You'll have to wait a full revolution. And like a three mana rock just kind of sucks. Yeah, I don't like this card at all. I would avoid this. It's not worth playing. Honestly, you should only be playing mana rocks that are two or less if your commander is five or greater and you'll be investing three mana it better get multiple lands or tap for multiple mana don't waste your time you're just kind of hurting yourself in the deck construction phase xavier sal infested captain this guy's kind of cool kind of works a lot like gave in this guy's scenario you could either proliferate and put counters on everything or you remove counters to populate it's a very inverse relationship i imagine there's Gonna be a lot of combos around this. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but there are Tim decks out there that put counters on stuff. Then there are things that untap themselves. The list goes on. I wouldn't be surprised if someone's brewed up an infinite combo with this already. It feels like it's there. Tetsun, Gnome Champion. This guy, he wants to be building a double face artifact tribal deck. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Whenever it or another double faced artifact enters the battlefield, you mill three, and then you may put an artifact from your card into your hand. And then uh, it has craft six artifacts. So let's see what his backside does. I mean, six artifacts is a lot of better do something brutal. 6-6 six, six, Vigilance Trample, when it enters the battlefield or attacks, transform up to one other target double face artifact you control. Create two one one no artifacts. Well, that's a little disappointing. <laughs> I feel like there aren't a lot of brutal double face artifacts out there. Like the one I could think of is the Blade of Elbrus, where you flip it over and it's the demon. And then there's a handful in this set that are pretty brutal too, but like six artifacts. Come on. It gets a little easier because you're milling artifacts. It's still not a good payoff for doing all that work. Transform a random two-faced artifact when there's a really small pool of cards. It's a janky deck. You're probably not going to win a whole lot of games if you run this as your commander with that in mind. It's a little bit of a bait build. Contest of Claws. Target creature control deals damage, builds power, and then XX damage this way. You discover X. That's kind of cool. I'm not a big fan of fight spells because they're conditional removal, but the fact that you could get an additional card off of this, that's kind of nice. Even if it's just one mana. If you're running one drops or cheaper in your deck, you're running them for a reason, you know what I mean? It's better than nothing. It does come at the uh, sorcery speed, so that's a bit of a bummer. Or rich stalactite. Can only be tapped to add for instants and sorcery spells. Craft with four or more red instants or sorcery cards. Let's see it's back. That's five mana to do that. <laughs> the goblins. Face only a mother could love. Choose an exiled card used to craft it. At random, you cast a card without paying its mana cost. I like that it's cheap on the front side. Playing Spell Slinger in EDH, it's perfectly fine. It's very useful. Altar of the Wretched. Enters the battlefield second non-token creature. If you do draw X, then mill X, where X is that creature's power. And then can craft with one or more creatures for four mana. Jesus. For three mana, you can return Altar of the Wretched from your graveyard to your hand. So this is a really resilient card. People blow it up, do it again. Backside, power and toughness is equal to the total power of exile cards used to craft it. It has a bunch of keywords based on the things it's exiling. This rewards you for exiling more creatures. Of all the crafting cards we've seen so far, this is probably one of the better ones because like they say craft one or more. But so far, I haven't seen a whole lot of cards that like warrant a reward for exiling more than the minimum. This one does. Illustrious Wanderglyph. If you have 10 or more permanents, you have a City's Blessing. So this is basically a uh, Tender Shoe Dryad 2.0 in white. <laughs> I guess the Anthem effect is slightly better because 
Tender Shoot Dryad only gives its Anthem for Saprolings. This gives it out to all artifact creatures, so it's slightly better. Um, there are plenty of decks out there that want artifact creatures. Mephidros and Vampire get a full art treatment. Each creature you control is a vampire, and whenever a creature deals damage to a creature, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. If your creature's at first strike, that's pretty sweet because uh, you'll get to put the counters on first and maybe that adds a little bit of extra survivability. Cool Vampire, I haven't personally played it. I haven't seen someone play it. It's an old card, probably needed a reprint. Carnage Tyrant's getting a full art treatment. That's pretty sick. I actually still run this card, even in EDH. It depends on the meta that I'm in. In CDH, if I'm in tables that play a lot of blue, uh, you'd be amazed how much work a Carnage Tyrant gets done. <laughs> it just can't be dealt with, uh, other than blowing it up after it's hit the field with like a board wipe. That's your only option. But he's an oldie and a goodie. Unfortunately, he's not gonna be in standard. All right, my boy. Wakanda forever! He is my CDH commander. My very first video of this channel is actually me playing Lord Windgrace. I'll admit it's crappy quality because it's the first one, but it's basically a montage of me going 11 and 0 playing my CDH deck. This makes me want to go back and revisit that video by making a new one and playing it and seeing if I could crack my old winning streak. If you never see Lord Windgrace, he's uh, one of the best land commanders. Uh, he's good for a grindy game. What I particularly like, he turns any card into a looting effect. People will go out of their way to discard lands, but the way I play him in CDH is I include a lot of hosers in the deck. It's so like red elemental blasts and pyroblasts kind of stuff they specifically say counter or destroy a blue permanent or blue spell if my opponent is not in blue then there, there would be dead cards in my deck but since lord windgrace gives me the ability to discard and draw it just replaces a dead card that was in my deck and if i am against someone that those cards hose i win games pretty handily the minus three and the minus 11 are just like the cherry on top, I guess you could say. Normally I just control people out to the point where people surrender. Quite excited for this. It sure as hell beats the secret layer version, which is like a cutie cat, but I'm not interested in that. This, truly badass. Very Weather Light Duelist. You're rewarded for going very aggressive. It becomes harder for them to block, it becomes harder for other people to tag you back, which is what you want in an aggro style. Rampaging Ferocidon is getting a full art treatment. This card was a house back in its heyday in standard, so much so that it was actually banned. Back in the day, banning cards was unheard of in standard. Now there's always seems to be multiple cards in a rotation, getting banned in standard. I like to think Rampaging Frost on was where it all began. It just does a lot. It's a 3 3 with menace for three mana, and it denies your opponents from getting life, and then it punishes people for playing creatures. It's a brutal dinosaur. <laughs> I love playing Frost on in my control decks that have red. It's an easy include. You're normally not running a whole lot of creatures anyways, so it's one-sided. Pitiless Plunderer, he's just a combo uh, master in the Aristocrats world. The classic is you have Sack Outlet and Grave Crawler. You net a mana, or sorry, you don't net a mana, but you make enough mana to recast your Grave Crawler from your graveyard. And if you have something that's draining people for every time something dies, that's your infinite combo. Just on its own, it brings a lot of value to the game. It's a 1-4, so it just effectively stuffs a lot of aggressive strategies, and then you get rewarded for people removing your stuff or killing your own stuff which we've already talked about dargo the shipwrecker is getting fuller treatment too this is also another combo commander the cost reduction for sacking stuff it's really easy to do i've seen like 20 dollars budget decks pull off infinites with dargo if you pair this up with like pitiless plunderer in play or phyrexian altar that's you have a red source so you could recast and loop dargo from your command zone pretty effectively Ajir kaslim deepest growth all right. <laughs> Deals damage to a player. Reveal that many cards from the top of your library. May put a creature or land and cheat him into play. That's kind of nice. Let's see what its backside does. For three mana, if you control 10 permanents, essentially ascend, you get to flip it back over. Man, that's brutal. Uh, getting 10 permanents in play is really easy to do. I think out of all the gods, this is definitely the easiest condition uh, to pull off. And its front side is like a pretty scary effect. It lets you dig multiple cards to put more permanents into play. It just feeds into itself and trying to get that 10 permanents. It also has trample, so you're getting that evasion as well. I don't understand what the art is. It looks like two worms 
coming together. Uh, <laughs> I think these are the heads right here and it's coiling onto itself. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Kutsil's Flanker. Enters, choose one. Put a plus one plus one on this for each creature left the battlefield under your control this turn or gain two life scry two or exile target player's graveyard. I feel like these cards don't get the love that they deserve. We've gotten so many iterations of utility creatures that they just don't end up getting played. I hope this one changes those odds because those are all significant. I think they're more valuable in one-on-one -on -one formats because exiling a graveyard in a format or in a set where there's a lot of graveyard shenanigans can be quite significant. The worst ability on this is getting two life scrying too. <laughs> I guess it's abusable. You could flicker it with Brago. It's strictly better than a lot of the graveyard hate. Like, I'd rather play this than four drop that exiles the target player's graveyards. And then digging for two cards with Brago multiple times a turn isn't a bad deal, I guess. Corpses of the Lost, three mana. Skellies get plus one plus haste. And then when it enters, create a two two Skelly. Being of your end step, if you descended this turn, you may pay one life to return this back to your hand. If you have excess mana and nothing better to do, then I don't see why not. <laughs> <laughs> it must be in dire straits, you know what I mean? Because that's all you're going to be doing. Three mana investment to make another 3-2 with haste. At least the mana investment is equivalent to the, the board presence that you're getting. Kind of reminds me of a lot of limited situations. You're like, you're drafting three drops that have at least three power or three toughness. This kind of feels like the same. And if you're trying to play this in the skeletons deck, it's not going to improve your situation that much because skeletons in commander is awful. Nice work. Bone Daddy. <laughs> Fabrication Foundry. This is another cheap, like, mana rock with specific requirements. This one only lets you cast artifact spells or activate artifact sources. For three mana, you can exile one or more other artifacts control with mana value X. Return target artifact mana value X or less in regard to the battlefield. It's not bad. We've seen the red one today and now the white one. There's probably going to be the whole suite. I'll be interested to see what the other ones do. I think this one's strictly better than the red one because artifacts are king. You probably won't be hindered much by this. If you need an integral piece, you could always make another card of yours, a sacrificial lamb, and make your deck a little more resilient. Really good. Thousand Moons Smithy. Oh gosh. So on ETB, you make a gnome with uh, power and toughness equal to the number of creatures and artifacts you control. And on your pre-combat main phase, you may tap five untapped artifacts and or creatures to transform this. Let's see what its backside does. Could tap for white and then if you use that mana to cast an artifact or creature, you get to make another one of those gnomes with a special power and toughness clause. That's pretty good. I like that it counts both artifacts and creatures, just widens your net a lot bigger. Deep Fathom Echo, Merfolk Spirit. I like the creature typing on this one. To be a combat of your turn, it explores. You may have it become a copy of another target creature you control to end of turn. Its stat block is nice for its CMC. You can make it a little bit bigger with that explore trigger. Go digging for stuff, guarantee your land drops. I think this will be a pretty sweet top end for mid-range decks in 60 card formats. The clone decks are pretty powerful. Making more copies of something doesn't seem like a bad idea. For one mana, War in the Sky, it's a white creature. It's a one-two. As long as there's three or more counters on Keeper of the Inner Sky, it has flying vigilance. If you tap three untapped artifacts or indoor creatures, put a plus one plus one on this and then scry one. I guess the beauty of this is it could tap itself so you'd only need two more pieces to do that. Eight, L, seven, weenie. Definitely way better than a vanilla creature. I don't know if this would be enough to warrant playing white weenies. The other sweet part about this is it doesn't care about summoning sickness. So thinking to 60 card formats, say you play this turn one and then you have two more one drops on turn two you'll have three creatures and start jamming the counters on this as early as turn two. And in white weenie decks, if you're playing that many one drops, which is the only viable way to be playing white weenies, could be pretty sweet. And then you get an evasive creature in the end because the biggest drawback of playing white weenies is your creatures don't have evasion. Your goal is to get the damage in early when your opponents have an empty board. And then in the mid game, when the board starts getting gummed up and people could start blocking you more efficiently, you start trailing off and lacking uh, damage output. And this guy gets around that. And it also leaves a, a blocker up because once it gets Vigilance, that's a pretty nice feeling. Ooh, Lightning Greaves is getting another Fuller Treatment. I like this a hell of a lot more than the one that we got. The colors are way cooler. There aren't a lot of artifacts with zero equip costs. If you ever played against a coal deck, they really value these things because it enables them to do infinite loops. 
Whenever a creature dies and it was equipped, it gets bounced back to your hand. Since this requires no mana investment to equip, it's an easy include in the equation. You just start running things like kobolds, equipping a zero drop, and then you just need a sack outlet and a payoff. I guess a good example of that would be blasting station. You sack your kobold that's equipped with this, deal damage to something, the kobold comes back to your hand. You replay the kobold and the blasting station gets untapped and rinse wash repeat terrain soul cleaver legendary equipment for one mana it doesn't care about your graveyard it cares about everybody's graveyard which is quite significant the blade of blood chief it does care about creatures dying but it doesn't care about artifacts take your pick of what you like but we don't have enough cheap equipment out there that gives significant stat boost so this is a welcome addition in my book echoing deeps interest copy of any land card in your graveyard and it's a cave and additional types that's kind of cool the only thing it sucks is it enters tap so it's kind of a turn off for me it could cost you games i'm just not interested well i've forgotten choose one if there are eight or more permanents in your graveyard you as you cast this choose one or more you get to return a target non land permanent to their or a sand target opponent discards a card or look at the top three cards of your library put one of them in your hand the rest in your graveyard damn this card's sick for two mana getting to send eight's really easy and if you're not there it's not a big deal like this has a lot of significant modes on it i think this will be a very popular card in even more eternal formats like modern let me know in the comments below if you think of a crackpot for thinking that uh, another man land we haven't seen this one becomes a 4-4 blue and black shark with death touch when it attacks target player mills four I don't know if people still play Demir Mill in Modern, but this wouldn't be a bad inclusion. People are already playing uh, Creeping Tar Pit in Modern Mill decks. This is just strictly better. <laughs> Squirming Emergence. Free mana. You have to return a non-land permanent in your graveyard with mana value less than or equal to the number of permanent cards in your graveyard. That's pretty sick. I like that it comes back into play. You don't see that a whole lot. Normally, if you wanted an effect like this, it's unconditional for four mana. But for a mana cheaper with a little bit of extra conditions, I think this is still better than those. Cool inclusion. I like the art on it too. A call Pockle first among equals. Oh God. <laughs> His art matches the title. I will say that. <laughs> Looks like it's full of hot air. Each player's end step. If an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, at the top two of your library, put one of your hand, the other in your graveyard. Getting an artifact to come into play on every turn is not that hard to do, especially with like cost reduction. There's so much support now for flash. Like we just got two of them, the skittering cicada from commander masters. And then before that we got liberator from brothers war those two in shimmermer and there's tons of things in blue like leyline of anticipation you could also run vidalcan horary those are just five cards alone that enable you to cast artifacts on other people's turns i think you could see a lot of cards with this guy he's got a big butt so you can shut out a lot of aggro it might even see play in um 60 card formats just for that like effect um making artifact tokens is also not that hard to do Cool card, Jamil the Inner Sun. So as you control camp countered at the beginning of your end step, discover five. That's a nice reward. I hate cards that are big and expensive and don't give you an immediate payoff. This one does. Plus you discover five, and if your opponent doesn't counter this, it makes your spells from then on out uncounterable. That's a sweet deal. It just sucks that it costs six mana and you have to get there. I'd probably play this in any of my colorless decks. And the effect of not being able to counter your stuff when you're investing a ton of mana um, is also a good feeling if you're playing big mana decks. You're kind of dependent because if someone invests a two mana spell to kill or counter your 10 mana thing, it's just a feel bad. <laughs> you spent your turn doing one thing while your opponents are doing a heck of a lot more. Sentinel of the Nameless City. 3-4 of Vigilance for three mana. Holy cow. That stab block with a keyword and an additional ability. ETBs are attacks. You create a map token. Holy god. <laughs> This thing is a house in uh, one on one formats. I'd be pretty worried about this thing. It just does a little bit of everything. It's a threat, aggressive, it's defensive, and it gives you uh, card selection. Call me impressed. Molten Collapse. If you descended, do both. Destroy target creature Planeswalker or destroy target non creature non land permanent mana, one or less. This feels like a CDH card. There aren't a lot of spells in Magic that could deal with both creatures and Planeswalkers. Like we have Dreadbore, and that's also a sorcery. You just add another effect of being able to blow up something one or less, which is super common in CDH. In CDH, you have to expect Moxes and you have to expect Soul Ring or Mana Crypt and just a litany of other one drops or cheaper. If you could two for one, pretty strong cards for only two mana. Nothing will remain of you. 
that's a pretty darn good feeling. And it getting to send it is not that hard. If you crash a fetch land on turn two, or even earlier, this is online. Starring Revenant enters the battlefield to rail two. Then for each card you put on top of your library, you draw a card and you lose three life. You get to really sculpt your hand there. For the send eights, whenever you draw a card, if you were eight or more permanents in your graveyard, target opponent loses one life, you gain a life. That's nice. Take some damage on the front end, start gaining that life back on the back end, and at the same time, decreasing your opponent's life total. For four mana and a four four, that's pretty sick. I can see this being played in 60 card formats. <laughs> I think of the song WAP, and I purposely replace the explicit word with horror, and you can't tell the difference. <laughs> I sing that out loud in my shop. Ancient one, the send eight. Can't attack or block unless that is met. For four mana, you can draw a card and discard. Target player mills cards equal to its mana value. It could really advance you to the descend eight really quickly. Other than that, it's a eight eight vanilla creature. You could three shot someone in a game of commander. If you want to facilitate a mill deck, this could be pretty powerful. That brings us to the end of today's and yesterday's spoilers. I hope you all enjoy. I keep my videos nice and quick for everyone to enjoy. I want to thank everyone who watches my stuff. I also want to give a special thank you to everyone who's subscribed and continues to support what I do. If you like the holiday of Halloween, I made a, a Halloween video for all of you to enjoy. I put a little extra effort in that one. Thank you for your time. Have a great one. Bye.